Hey fam, what's up, what's up, what's up? This is Robert Anton here, robertanton.com. I am watching The Voice of America. It was Battle Rounds 2, and let me tell you, um, I, I, I don't know what to think of this show yet, so thank goodness during each episode so far with the battle rounds they have totally explained how it's going to work so maybe after they explained it four times it'll get into my thick skull <laughs> <laughs> how it is going to work or how it is working. But so far they have had two battle rounds. Of course they had two uh, blind auditions. So I'm going to go and break down battle round two. Let the battle begin! Yeah, anyway, so this time they had first up Team CeeLo. And CeeLo picked Ty Austin uh, versus Nakia. And they were doing Closer by Neo, right? So Monica is the mentor who he brought in to help them, you know, work on the song and everything. And she gave some good advice to him. And one thing that I wrote down, she wrote, she said, make him feel it, make him remember it, make him respect it. And not make him, but make them, meaning the audience. So that, she was just saying that to him to, to try to give him that kind of energy to, 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 project the song and to get the idea of what he was going for in this battle. What I thought about it was, I thought when I heard them, they have such diverse voices, you know, and looks, but definitely voices. And and every time Nakia sang and then Ty sang, you could tell like his, his voice was so much more gruff and heavy and Ty's was very light and melodic. It was just such a difference. And for me, I could not choose who I would want to be the winner. Looking at them and hearing the way they sound, I probably would have chosen Ty. But <laughs> they both got a standing ovation um, from the audience. Uh, Monica said she would have went with Ty. But CeeLo chose Nakia. And he said because he likes the difference, the thing where it's like this sort of thing doesn't supposed to happen. It's kind of not normal for Nakia to have such a soulful sound, such a soulful voice, and look the way he does. So he went with Nakia, which I think could, you couldn't have made a bad choice um, with this this competition between the two of them, this battle. You couldn't have made a bad choice. Both of them were excellent. It's just they have very different types of voices. Next up, Team Blake. And he chose Ellen Owen, a duet, versus Jared Blake. And they were doing Ain't No Mountain. So, Reba McIntyre is his mentor who's helping him. And Reba talked about, uh, to, the, to the duet, Ellen Owen, about how them looking so uncomfortable doing what they're doing could make the audience uncomfortable. And I just talked about this uh, in a past video and in the comments um, when I was talking about Ida, when I was talking about how James Durbin now looks just so comfortable on stage that he makes me comfortable. And it's the same thing. If, if an artist and you're watching them, they just look very uncomfortable. They look like they can't do this. They can't. It, then you start to get uncomfortable and you start to, to feel uncomfortable for them. And so she was trying to get them over this uncomfortableness. Um, by telling them to look in the mirror and, 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 and watch how they look and, and, and kind of pose and do their thing so that they don't look uncomfortable, so that they look confident um, for the audience, even if they're not as confident in all the notes. Blake said they weren't blending in rehearsal, which was so true. They, from the little bit I heard, I was like, oh my God, what's going on? And he said they were all trying to out-sing each other. And you know, it's a strange thing with this battles, which I'm not very familiar with the battle in this competition, but when people are battling against each other, like just live, you know, sometimes you're out at a club or something, and singers will sing no matter where they are. And they're kind of battling back and forth, you know, in a fun kind of way. You know, you still at times Times want to be able to blend and, and help each other sound better and they just weren't blending so that did change a little bit when they got onto stage all right I wrote that they sounded okay to me um, that I didn't think any of them were uh, really vocally great and I didn't the song just didn't fit either one of them very well either of the three very well it was a little too low for the female it was too high for the guys um, so it just wasn't great. I did think that Jared really worked the stage. You know, he was really into the performance. He's really doing his thing. And he did just about that much better vocally. And um, Blake chose uh, Jared Blake. Blake Shelton chose Jared Blake. And I thought it was a good choice considering because, like I said, he just was that much better vocally. But he really did bring an all-around performance. He was a lot better. Next up was Team Adam, and he chose Javier Colon versus Angela Wolf, and they were doing Stand By Me. So I thought this was just a terrible matchup. I really did. Um, I, I thought it was unfair. Um, Angela was saying, you know what, she gets to sing with one of the best singers in the competition, uh, but yeah, baby, uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, her being one of the last chosen in the second round, you know, she wasn't chosen the first time. Um, I just didn't think she was strong enough to stand up against him. Now, both of the Adams were saying to Javier to um, not sing so much and, and to show some discipline with his runs and stuff like that. When I think, you know, every time that I've heard him do a run, it has been dead on. It has been perfect. It has been the right place. So I, I feel like Adam, especially Adam Levine, chose this song because he wanted to pull it back a little bit in order to make it a little more fair for Angela. Um, but it still didn't make it any more fair because Javier was going to do what he was going to do. No matter what Adam said, I believe, you know, you have to be true to yourself. And he knows what works for him. And he might have pulled it back a little bit and not done as much as he normally would have done. But he still, when he was performing, he was still, the runs were just falling out, you know, and they were just, they were just natural. And that's the way they should be. And so I wrote, Javier was killing it and being true to himself. Um, and Angela was often like, she was going off pitch and she was, she was totally like, just, just, she was cheesing, you know, but, but it was like, she was, it was like she was there on stage with her idol or something like that. You know, she was so looking up to him um, that it was just, it was, it was kind of pitiful. I, you know, it's like, oh, that's so sweet. But it was also like, oh, she's going home, you know? And she was trying some stuff and she was going off. And I think because he was doing some riffs, she tried some riffs and they really didn't work. And so naturally Adam chose Javier because he was just better. I mean, all of the judges were just like, you know, you're so sweet and everything, Angela. But he just totally, she was just outclassed as a vocalist. Um, and I thought it was, I, it was just a very bad matchup. And, and that's just, just, just that. Um, yeah, next up was Team Christina, and she chose Beverly McClellan uh, versus Justin Grinnan, and they were doing Baba O'Reilly by The Who, right? Um, yeah, and I thought I thought it was a bad choice because I thought it would naturally, her being the rocker kind of chick, that it would be naturally in her favor. Um, and he was more of like, not really a, like a pop R&B kind of voice. Um, yeah, but anyway, I, this, this ended up being like, I, I tweeted that this was like my favorite lead in because it was just so, it was like really going to be a challenge. It was like a, a heavyweight battle, you know, that they were really going at it, you know, and she was just very, very funny to me, just very aggressive aggressive and very like crazed like I'm gonna bring it you know <laughs> it reminded me of like Wrestlemania so it was probably the most entertaining lead in to the battle of all of them so far I mean like everyone that I've seen on The Voice you know if every single one was like this then I would be more inclined to watch and enjoy the show but anyway I wrote this one was tipped in Beverly's favor um I thought both did so great I thought he did wonderful he had some good choices that he made although he tended to go off on some of his riffs and when he went to his lower range he just wasn't strong at all and Christina chose Beverly if you don't know already she chose Beverly because she was just the strongest and she killed it and she was entertaining but she also was on it vocally one of my people was saying you know oh she's kind of screaming and stuff like that when we were chatting back and forth on Twitter but I was like no it, I didn't feel like it was screaming I felt like it was just total like total presence of her voice just totally there and she had the whole rock thing going on it wasn't a scream because they actually had one little part where they were really light and they were doing a little harmony and she came right down to it and it was just beautiful so I I thought that Christina made the best choice uh, there. I mean, you know, I, if it was a different song, it might have been different. It was a more uh, R&B tinged, you know, Michael McDonald kind of thing. But I don't know. She might have still wore it out. So <laughs> I'm liking Beverly a lot for her personality and also for her singing skills. Uh, what did you guys think of the show? Are you getting more warmed up to it? Uh, I think it's still a little bit overhyped, the best singing show and all that good stuff. I, I, I don't... I don't believe that. I don't think so. But I think that it does have its good points, and I am starting to like the battle rounds, especially the lead-ins when they are more, like, crazy and funny and entertaining. Um, yeah, tell me what you thought. All right, this is Robert Anton, robertanton.com. I am also a singer, in case you did not know, I'm a professional singer. I have four CDs available on iTunes and most major download services. I also here on YouTube have a series called So You Want to Be a Singer, and it is kind of a coaching question answer series um, telling people how they might become professional singers, professional performers for a living for a lifetime. All right, love you. Out once again.